all right. Uh, what can we say about our next guest? Uh, Milana Weintrub. Yep. How am I doing? Really good. I nailed it. Better than I did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> plays Lily in all those AT&T commercials. Everybody loves Lily. Well, she's uh, put dozens of comic videos on YouTube, but her latest project turned very serious quite by accident. She went to Greece, planted a vacation with her father, and saw firsthand the Syrian refugee crisis. So we uh, drove up to this viewpoint to watch boats come in because there really isn't an organized place or a way to predict where the boats are coming in. Someone drove by with binoculars and uh, with that we were able to spot a tiny little orange dot. We're gonna try to rush down and get these people up. There's lots of doctors here to reach people but they are still in need of emergency blankets and uh, people who can speak the language. Luckily, Eamon speaks Arabic and, and he's helping out. I'm kind of just wrapping babies in blankets. But there's lots of kids and lots of men and lots of emotions. Wow. What, wow. What, you were on vacation in Greece yeah. with your dad. What was the thing that made you do that? Um, it was just being so close to it and knowing that I could do something and I felt like if I just went home and pretended like it wasn't happening, I felt like I would regret it. Right. So you weren't, it seems like you were equipped to like record everything. Was that just your iPhone? That was or? just my iPhone. So everyone's equipped so to So you were just everything. playing it by ear at that point. You're like, yes. you saw something happening and you thought I'm going to document this and maybe someday I'll put something together. Well, at first I started doing it for myself because mm -hmm. I knew that I was about to go into a, a life changing moment and I wanted to remember it forever. Yeah. I, I want to show something here to some part of the explanation why you're pulled to do this. Yeah. Uh, I think the year was 1988. Am I right? 89. 89. Your family, you as a little baby, you'll see in a second, uh, trying to leave Russia to come to the United States. Yeah, the Soviet Union. Soviet Union. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go to this clip. I think we'll see the anchor is uh, Bill Redeker. In the United States, the Soviet Union is finally allowing thousands of Jews to emigrate and leave their lives of religious persecution. But now the United States is blocking their flight to freedom. Leaving virtually everything behind, they came here to wait for an interview with the Immigration and Naturalization Service. For the Weintraub family, help cannot come too soon. So for now, all the Weintraubs have is this videotape. <laughs> Oh, Where are you going, Milana? What a America. Doll. Say good at the Yiddish. Good at the Yiddish. Yeah. yeah. Do you speak Russian? A little bit. That's cute. Um, so how old wow. were you there? I was two. Oh. Yeah. Now where where are you coming from? I was born in Uzbekistan. Okay. Yeah. And and obviously you got here, but your heart still stays sensitive to all of this. Well, yeah, my family went through the refugee process, and so many Soviet Jews did. So many of our ancestors did, whether you're Irish or Italian or whatever your heritage is. You had to leave the place you were from to get to America. So I think a lot of people have that compassion in their mm -hmm. hearts. Yeah, you're drawn to the whole idea of refugees. But, but you, you know, know what? A lot of people don't have that passion in their hearts, well, as we've seen when... You yeah. know, when things happen politically here in the United States that you some people forget that that's how a lot of people got here. Yeah, I think that's the thing to focus on really is that they are just people and there are lots of things, lots of pretty simple things that we can do to help, which is why I, I started this video, but I'm kind of using it to help people by um, launching this campaign called hashtag can't do nothing. Can't do nothing. You had yeah. so much access in your video. Mm -hmm. I was a little surprised you could just run up to the beach and as people literally are coming in on the boats, you're able to just film it and no one's telling you to kind of back away or anything or mm -hmm. keep well, a distance. You just kind of roam around and you even put refugees in the car with your friend, right? And took them to locations. I Yeah, I helped give them a ride. It was a long walk from where they get off the boat mm -hmm. to where what you're seeing now, which is a place for them to get clothes and food and... Well, you make a point in watching uh, this that you greeted them, they looked pretty good, uh, you changed a lot of diapers yeah. and all of that. So many but babies. But that's just the first moment of the process. You make yeah. it very clear, this may be their best moment. Mm -hmm. Because Getting the food who knows what the they're going through after this. Yeah, the, the process after this is very long. <laughs> and um, so what we're trying to do with the social campaign 
is help them out from this point forth is um, you know equip people yeah. so that they can do some simple steps that would help this I think it sometimes feel a little helpless for us to be like well this is happening so yeah. far away what could we to possibly do it well this yeah. helps this helps put everything in perspective and to see it you must feel really good about this project because you know you've got the commercial which is great and you do your stand-up which is a lot of fun but it mm -hmm. feels like you might actually be changing the world now yeah, I mean, the Can't Do Nothing movement has only been happening for like a week and we already have tens of thousands of That's people so who cool. are involved. Oh, this is very, very recent. It's, I didn't realize you had just gotten back. Well, I was back a couple months ago, but it, it took a minute to put get everything the, to right. get the video right. together. So if we want to help in the campaign, what do we do? Um, well, you can start by doing one social post. So you can say, hashtag Can't Do Nothing, right. and then talk about something that you've done. Maybe you have visited can'tdonothing.org and there there are places for you to share your time, money, or voice. Mm -hmm. And then you tag three people and challenge them to, uh, yeah. to can't do, do nothing. Do people yeah. know who you are out of the United States? No, I don't think so. And can you walk into any mall here and not be mobbed? Yeah, I'm not mobbed. <laughs> You're not I'm, mobbed? I, I'm more like friendly <laughs> approached. <laughs> like they know you. They know this person. Yeah, do they, they, they feel like they went to high school with you or something? Yeah, it's there's one of a familiarity. Or do they sure. think that you work there? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I do you think ever, if you put on this outfit you have on in the commercial uh -huh. and just walked around the mall, it would throw you should people go off. Out the you should go hang out at the store. You should throw people off. Yeah, just totally. Just walk in. Yeah, I got nothing to do. I got a ton right? of spare time. Ton of time. Yes. Sure. You're not like changing people's lives. So. Thanks. Nice to meet you.